The Princess Diana Cream and Rod Cushion, What Saved Harry's Genitalia from Amputation The world is currently talking about Prince Harry's Arctic expedition. Harry briefly mentioned that during a 13-day expedition to the North Pole in 2011, he not only froze his face and ears, but also his little Rod. But later, the main scandalist of the royal family revealed that the head of the organ remained very raw and painful as it healed. This greatly troubled him, as he soon had to go to William and Kate's wedding and not show that he was in pain. He was unable to get rid of the unpleasant sensations as he saved himself from them according to the advice of a friend. As the pain persisted, Harry began to seek out alternative methods of healing. That's when he discovered the Princess Diana Cream, a secret remedy passed down through the royal family for generations. According to legend, the cream was created by the late Princess Diana herself and was said to have miraculous healing properties. Desperate for relief, Harry decided to give the cream a try. To his surprise, it worked wonders. Within a few days, the pain and discomfort in his genital area had completely disappeared. He was finally able to enjoy the royal wedding without any discomfort. But the cream wasn't the only secret weapon in Harry's healing arsenal. He also used a special little rod cushion that was said to have been used by Meghan Markle's ex-boyfriends. The cushion was designed to provide extra support and comfort to the genital area, and Harry found it to be incredibly effective. With the help of the Princess Diana Cream and a little rod cushion, Harry was able to make a full recovery and put the traumatic experience of his Arctic expedition behind him. To this day, he remains grateful for the healing power of these secret remedies and for the advice of his friend. However, not everyone was pleased with Harry's success. Meghan Markle, who had recently married into the royal family, was not happy to hear that her ex-boyfriend's little rod cushion had played a role in Harry's recovery. She saw it as a personal affront, and the relationship between the two of them became strained as a result. Despite the tension, Harry refused to give up the cushion, citing its effectiveness in his recovery. Eventually, Meghan came to accept Harry's use of the cushion, but their relationship was never the same. The incident served as a reminder of the cutthroat nature of the royal family and the lengths one must go to in order to survive in such a high-stakes environment. Meghan had always been fascinated by the royal family and saw Harry as her ticket to fame and fortune. She had used her knowledge of the royal family's secret remedies and her connections with the ex-boyfriends to manipulate Harry and make him fall for her. But as the world would soon find out, Meghan's true intentions were far from pure. She was a master of manipulation and deceit and had only used Harry for her own gain. She had no real feelings for him and was only interested in using him to boost her own fame and status. In the end, Harry would learn the hard way that not everything is as it seems and that even those closest to us can betray us. He would come to realize that Meghan Markle was nothing more than a snake in the grass, using him for her own gain. But by then, it would be too late. The damage would have been done, and Harry would be left to pick up the pieces of his shattered life.